I'm Lisa Taylor, president of Challenge Factory. Hidden Talent is a Challenge Factory podcast. Challenge Factory is grateful for the support of Veterans Affairs Canada through the Veteran and Family Wellbeing Fund. Challenge Factory believes you should meet the changing world of work head on and take control of your future. Is your business prepared for the future of work? Well, this podcast series, along with the Challenge Factory Masterclass in Hiring and our Canadian Guide to Hiring Veterans, will help you do just that. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to Hidden Talent. In this final episode of Season 1, we thought it would be a good idea to bring all of our contributors together to talk about what they've learned from the project, to share their big ahas, their perspective shifts, and to focus on our collective next steps to uncovering hidden talent. I'm your host, Erin Trafford, and around the podcast table today, we have Lisa Taylor, president of Challenge Factory, Chris Stoyles, retired military veteran, and Janine Harris and Sarah Dunkley, who represent the voices of our small business owners. Our discussion begins with me asking Sarah how, after being part of this project, she'll approach networking and her professional network differently. I think I'm even more seeing the importance of my network. Um, you know, and I think as a result of this project, I'm actually one of my objectives this year is actually to widen my network and to um, build my network. Um, so I'm seeing, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, we're often having problems and challenges. One of them is finding the right people, um, but there's lots of other ones. And I have found when I've gone to my network and of entrepreneurs, that's where I've got the best guidance advice. You know, they've solved the problems before. Um, they have great advice and counsel, and I, I don't like recreating the wheel. So if, if someone has solved the problem that I'm trying to solve, um, or has guidance and advice, I would much prefer to go to them and get that. So I'm even more coming to the point of trying to build it and and putting effort, the effort, the energy, and the time into building it. Mm-hmm. Lisa, what are your thoughts on that? That whole concept of the network being actually more valuable than we realize, especially as it pertains to veteran talent. I, I think I love what Sarah was just saying about how it takes some intention. And I think especially in these last couple of years, as we've shifted out of regular networking and had to do online networking, what we've lost is we've lost the ability to have serendipity where we just expand our network because you're meeting with someone and they've brought someone else along. No one just drops into a Zoom call. So we've lost that ability to think about, like, not just who do you know, but who do they know? And how can you put yourself in situations where you're now meeting the broader network? It's much harder to do that. And I think also that idea that when, as business owners, we talk with other business owners, we get great advice and ideas, often even much better than we thought we would. And we sometimes don't even know that we need to ask the question, that there's something that we really just want to sit and talk with another business owner about. And that comes down to serendipity as well, or just intention. You know, I I may not necessarily have intended to end up in a session with Sarah where we're brainstorming business ideas, but if we're in a casual environment or if we've set up a time where we've intended just to spend time with each other without it being agenda focused, we may find that we get those opportunities. So it's been challenging the last couple of years. And then I think when you toss in a whole new talent pool, like becoming aware of veterans, I think that's where there's two sides to it. On the one hand, that may make it more difficult. On the other hand, it's new and there's something that we can learn. And that's exciting for entrepreneurs. So I think veteran talent actually provides a catalyst to do more intentional networking where you're just going out to learn what you don't know and to meet people you haven't met before. So catalyst and serendipity Chris, we got to bring you in on this because we a little bit did a show before the show when we were setting up to do this roundtable when you shared with us kind of this incredible sequence of events that has unfolded just since you decided to be part 
of this project with Challenge Factory. So tell us, first of all, a little bit about what you have learned personally, but then I also want to hear from you about some of the things that are happening behind the scenes with your employer that are totally the, the exactly what we've been trying to do with this entire hidden talent project. Yeah, Aaron, I think I first said it when we first met about how I had wished something like this had been created, you know, the 10 years ago when I released from the military. So yeah, learning um, the things that can bring every, all these different people in this podcast and that have been involved in this process together with a common goal of educating employers about veterans and then trying to uncover this hidden talent pool of veterans um, that can actually benefit a lot of different businesses, especially businesses that are not um, exposed to it or haven't dealt with it before, and even just reaffirming the ones that have um, to continue doing it. And and you have even noticed where where you're working, and feel free everyone to jump in here if you've got questions or, or observations, but that things are starting to shift even just since we started this project, you know, you're bringing on new people, right? Yeah, I think for my business, I actually shared one of the LinkedIn um, ads. And then that's when the president kind of wrote me, let's chat more. And then it was a Teams call. And then he was like 100% on board. HR is now involved. So they joined Lisa and the team with the beta testing, uh, which is fantastic. And now we're actually going to hire a veteran and then go through the process of myself being the mentor, the human resources team kind of being that coaching team. And then uh, move forward, obviously, to bringing on more people, because if we hire better and then we have two mentors and then we keep going from there, we have three and we have four and then bringing other senior members of the team on board and just kind of letting them understand that, yeah, this person may not have the exact experience on paper for the role that we're trying to fill. But if, you know, if we invest in him or invest in them, our return on investment will be great. Now, you work for a relatively large company, but Janine... And Sarah, we've kind of, we're, we're the smaller business owners. So Janine, when you're hearing Chris describe this process of the hiring and the onboarding, what's sticking out for you, what sticks out for me is that there is a process. There are lots of people involved. There is something there. And you had a bit, bit of an epiphany. You had quite a few. But one uh, thing yeah. that stuck out for me was your response to, I don't have a process. How did this project help you reframe that? Well, you know, I, I feel like I'm still in that, uh, in that mode because my needs are, are changing. And as we start this new year, I realize like, okay, I have to hire and mm -hmm. I have to apply what I'm learning. So th the idea that having a process and, and taking a different approach, it has to be a priority because the same old, same old, and that idea of a network. And, and I think years of experience in the business, like I, you know, I've been in business now for 20 plus years and my network has widened. Like it's, it's, it's a big network, but it's different than when you're out looking for a job in those early days where you're networking with all sorts of different people. And I think my network is extremely limited now. And so, yeah, I do need that process and I do need to take a different approach. Sarah, what are your thoughts on that? The whole, the process of it. I've relied on my team to do a lot of hiring. So with multiple businesses, uh, we, you know, typically my, my uh, organization, my, some of my employees will do the first line hiring and then depending on the role, I'll come in to, to do the next level. Um, so that's helped, I think, in terms of, uh, you know, we do have a bit of a process uh, for hiring. There's kind of a bit of a, you know, step one, step two um, of the process. I think the challenge is always, you know, creatively finding new candidates. And, you know, we love it when we have a referral if somebody vouches for the candidate that we're meeting um, versus, you know, we just post it on Indeed or whatever websites we're posting it on and we get a whole pile of applications. And then you're trying to weed through those applications. Like it's so much better if we have that uh, referral or somebody that knows the candidate. So I think when you think of networking, you know, the importance here is the wider our networks are, um, you know, the more opportunities there are for us to reach out to the people that we know and trust and get referrals and candidates. So I think that's really critical here because, you know, hiring is challenging. Um, you know, you meet somebody, you get a resume, you read it, 
um, you might call their references and you meet them for an hour. And now you're even meeting them on Zoom. You're not even meeting them in person. And, you know, what do you really understand about that candidate in an hour? What do you really know about their personalities, their strengths, their weaknesses, other than the marketing pitch they've given you on themselves? Um, so for me, you know, my best hires have come from my network. So I think, you know, the previous question about network is, you know, that the, the more great candidates that I can get introduced to and I have someone personally vouching that this is a good fit for my organization, um, those are the candidates that I put a lot higher um, uh, preference on. Lisa, this idea of introductions keeps coming back. So when we look at the the idea of an introduction, it's not only how you're presenting yourself. This is what I learned, at least not only how you're presenting yourself in the interview in terms of articulating a skills transfer, but it's also how other people even understand what you do so that when those referrals happen, it's a good connection, right? So if you were to give a veteran or Sarah and Janine some really solid advice right now, just based on everything that we've been talking about over the last seven episodes, how do we articulate those high level pitches from a veteran to an employer and, and how should the employer be listening? What have we learned? I think what's most important for the person that's in the interview is to is to know before you go in, rather than preparing answers to stock questions. A lot of times when people are preparing for the interviews, they they'll say, you know, well, what's the employer going to ask me? And they'll practice, you know, if they ask me this question, here's this answer. And instead mm-hmm. of preparing that way, uh, what what I always recommend is to know your best stories. So to think about, you know, over the course of your career, think about five, six, seven stories that really showcase how you work well with others, how you accomplish goals, how you're persistent, how you are, you know, some of the key themes that we know employers are looking for in great hires. The things that Sarah says is really hard for me to be able to assess in a quick interview. Are you actually good at that or not? Those are the things that think about five to seven stories that if you had the opportunity to tell, you know that the employer is going to love what you have to offer. And then when the employer is asking mm-hmm. you the question, when you're in the interview, bridge to one of the stories that you want to tell instead of worrying about, OK, they've asked me this question. I need to give this answer. Try not to memorize an answer and instead just feel good about your own story and that'll shine through. So that's the advice to the, the candidate, to the person that's in an interview For the small businesses, one of the things I'd like to come back to that's common in what Chris shared about what his company has been doing and what Janine and Sarah have mentioned about what's happened in their businesses or the way that they've been thinking about things since joining this project is all about introductions. So, you know, Chris championing this topic within his company and his company taking it up as something that they want to Uh, get behind. And even as he mentioned, beta testing, the beta testing that they did was for the master class so that they could help us have both the voices of veterans and the legitimate voices of business owners informing how do we create this master class so that there are ways for people to be able to go through this process on their own. It's been phenomenal to watch those introductions happen between business owners, across businesses, within the business. So that we're now really bringing, you know, in this case, Chris's veteran voice and his employer together to say, how can we do this better inside of this company? And I'm excited for what happens in that business next. I think that that's one of the most exciting takeaways that I have Mm -hmm. to watch, even in that one example, that one business that has really been able to grab onto these things. Yeah, brilliant. Janine, you had some... uh reaction to that? What did you want to say? Yeah, Lisa, I love what you said about telling stories, because as an employer, when you're looking at candidates, getting to know them, I, well, as I said, I have no process. So there is no stock standard question. But I also see the value, and, and Chris, maybe you can speak to this, but I think there's value in us having stories of our business and successes of our employees to share with veterans so they understand how we operate and, and what are the nuances of what we do. Because having those stories as opposed to saying, we do this, we do this, this is our process, this is how we do it, but having those stories really can, can level up the interview process from both sides. Yeah, I think that uh, veterans, obviously, specifically, have probably a very interesting story. So allowing them the opportunity to 
tell their story in potentially a process that they're very nervous because they probably maybe have never done this before or they weren't successful in the other ones. And maybe it was because they were just trying to Google, what do I do in an interview? Okay, bang, 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 here are the stock questions. Opposed to someone just kind of saying, just tell me about yourself and letting them feel comfortable and in telling their story, you'll probably learn way more about the person's character, their core values, um, is the person a fit in your organization? And they may not be, but that's not to say that they can't still tell their story. And then you're like, you know what, this person actually is amazing and uh, we want to bring them on board. Yeah, I would just add that, um, you know, often when we're interviewing people, uh, we are interviewing maybe 10 candidates back to back. And to be honest, those candidates kind of merge and it's hard to remember who's who and, you know, to really kind of um, separate the people in the stories because you're, you know, one interview to the next. So I feel like by sharing those stories and they're so interesting and different than we're hearing from other candidates, it's really truly setting the candidate apart and, you know, creating something that's super memorable and just an opportunity for an amazing connection um, by them, by the, st- the stories being shared rather than, you know, those candid Google questions that are being asked. And, you know, to be honest, as, a, as an interviewer, you know, I'm, you know, the candidates are doing the Google search for the top interview questions. So am I like, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, employers are doing the same thing. We're Googling and saying, okay, these are the top questions that I'm supposed to ask. So I better ask them. Um, so I think, you know, the opportunity to take those questions and tell stories, um, you know, really opens up for an opportunity of connection. And I think, you know, when I'm interviewing candidates and I'm actually achieving when I'm getting off those questions, um, that's such a better point. Um, and when I'm really enjoying the connection in the interview and getting to know the candidate. Talking about connection, there was this interesting thing that I, I think really came out in the final episode when we pulled all of you together and, and the learnings and the kind of the next steps. And it's this play between, and I think Janine, it was, you, you had a very particular clip that spoke to this, but this play between corporate culture, entrepreneurial culture, and military culture. And what I'm seeing is that obviously they're very different, but Chris, I'm curious to know your thoughts about this. Where do you see the similarities between the small business culture, the small business owners and the military? I think there are more similarities than, than we're realizing. Yeah, I think uh, probably one of the biggest similarities is that they both want to be there. Mm-hmm. So the entrepreneur is like, I want to do this because it's a passion of mine. And for the most part, the people that are serving, they want to serve, but they volunteered for their service because they have a passion to serve. So I think that's probably the biggest connection is the want to be doing what it is you're doing. I think that's brilliant. Lisa, what do you think about that? Big smile on your face right now. It's a yeah. podcast. Nobody can see it, but I can tell you that it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's brilliant, too. And I think it is really true. I think, you know, the small business owner and uh, the the person who has military training in their background and military service in their background, I think that's a great initial connection and connector. Um, and I think that it only then feeds into, so, you know, the commitment to getting the job done no matter what it takes or the ability to think creatively about how we're going to succeed. I think, Chris, you've really... Uh, hit the nail on the head for why are those attributes so important and so prevalent in both small business owners as well as in veterans. And it's it comes from that deep personal connection to the work that's being done. Mm-hmm. So let's just do a bit of a, a round robin here. I want to know each of you, you know, 30 seconds or less, what you learned, what the number one takeaway for you from this experience of being part of Hidden Talent was. And Janine, we'll we'll start with you. I still go back to my original aha, which is that that there is this hidden pool that never crossed my mind that they would, you know, military people would be moving into the regular job market and the talent that they bring. So that's that's my big aha, just that, that there is this amazing pool. And like Chris said, that alignment with the passion of a small business owner. But I also think that idea of self-management and being able to make decisions, critical decisions, because we all have to make them in our jobs. So whether you're the owner or an employee. So I think that's, for me, that's the big one. Mm-hmm. Sarah, you're nodding your head as Janine is 
is offering us her takeaways. What, what were yours from all of this? Yeah, I think mine was, um, you know, very similar that, um, you know, the more diversity of candidates that we can have apply for our roles and, you know, that it does include veterans uh, with a diversity of experience, you know, the higher chance we have of landing on the right candidate and the right fit for our roles. And, you know, I think in small businesses, we're asking our employees to wear multiple hats. You know, everybody has many, many responsibilities. And we're also needing people who are willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, and, you know, the example that I'll give is, you know, sometimes that involves, you know, the the manager having to stuff envelopes and, and make cold calls and because that's what's needed to get done. And I think you know, that is similar to um, my experience of understanding of the military. You have you do whatever you have to do to get the job done. Right. So I think that's valuable. Um, the different uh, the change that I'm thinking of really um, instituting is more of an onboarding process. That was a big wake up call for me is, you know, I bring I bring candidates into the role and I've sort of had a sink or swim type of um uh, you know, approach with them. And especially now that we're online and we're having to, we can't meet in person. I think it's even more putting that to candidates and putting even more pressure on them in, in with sink or swim. So for me, it was really evaluating and saying, okay, wow, I don't have an onboarding process and, and really giving some thought and consideration to that um, as well as, you know, a great pool of candidates to consider for my business. Ahas all over the place. Chris, Chris, what about you? I know you're established in your job and you, you're loving what you're doing, but what was the biggest takeaway for you? Um, I think that one thing that the military does really well is that they create leaders at all levels of within the organization. So this gives the veteran who wants to be a leader, for the most part, the opportunity to potentially educate their employer or for employers to be educated. And then for the veteran to be a part of that leadership team that goes through this process of bringing other veterans on board. And then again, it's back to the whole ownership ownership thing again, the ownership from the veteran to the small business owner. She's taking ownership of this is how I can make it better for veterans. And I'm just along for the ride. Awesome. And Lisa, final final words to you. Uh, this You've been such a champion of this entire project. So personally, on behalf of Challenge Factory, what were the biggest takeaways you think? Sure. So, you know, 10 years into doing this kind of work and working with different groups and having these kinds of conversations, I learned so much from all of you. So one of the big takeaways for me is that even those of us that are in this field and that do this work all the time, there's always more that we can be learning because the world of work is continually changing. And I'm really so grateful to this mini lab, to, you know, to Janine and to Sarah on the business owner side, as well as all of the business owners that helped us with beta testing and with all of the background, uh, as well as to Chris and Trevor and the other veteran voices that we really brought together. Usually veterans get a chance to talk about transition and business owners get a chance to talk about hiring and business. But the opportunity to have this as a lab where everyone's talking together and learning from each other has been incredible. And so really it's it's the bringing together and the learning together that I've been a part of and I've been very grateful for your time and your smart. Um, and, uh, and I just appreciate all of you, including um, Story Studio Network. Once again, thank you to our guests and contributors here on Hidden Talent. And now that you have listened to our entire season and have a sense of the challenges and potential solutions for hidden talent, we invite you once again to enroll in the masterclass for employer-tested ways to tap into the hidden talent pool of Canada's veterans, if you haven't already done so. You can find out more and sign up by visiting centerforcareerinnovation.ca at the link in the show notes. Reach out to the team at Challenge Factory with your thoughts, ideas, and feedback, especially if you're a small business or military veteran. This podcast is produced by Story Studio Network.